it's just confirmation that I was only joking about the full start <laughs> for poor old Roger swimming the channel. And there's a very good reason why we were talking about full starts. Do you see there was a link? Well, they're very but nearly. That went down like a lead balloon, didn't <laughs> you it? You upset absolutely everybody. everybody you know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, we're talking about Usain Bolt, aren't we? We are. And uh, <laughs> his shock exit from the World Athletic Championships because of his full start in the 100 metres final, it's led to calls for the rules to be changed once more. He was instantly disqualified after coming out of the blocks earlier. There's now a zero tolerance policy on false starts. Lord Coe defended the rule, but the sports governing body, the International Association of Athletics Federation, is expected to review it when it meets on Sunday. So what goes through a sprinter's mind once they're in the blocks and is a full start ever a conscious decision? Well, with us now, former British hurdler Tony Jarrett and Simon Drain, who is a performance psychologist from the English Institute of Sport. Very good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. You, you must have felt for Usain Bolt when you saw what happened, did you? Oh, yeah, because that, um, you know, that's what he's been training for. You know, all the races he's been racing prior to this, he wants to be to come out there and be world champion. And is that the pressure? Is that it? The moment that gun goes, what's going through your mind just before? I think most most athletes, when you want to go through, you're going through the mind, you're going through your mind that you want to just react well, get out well, and do the best race as possible. So you just want to get out, start well, and be in front of your opponents. But talk us through the psychology of this, because obviously you don't want to go off the blocks too early. But sometimes, as we know, it just happens. So, what's the process, sort of the brain, body engagement? Well, what can happen sometimes is, um, as Tony sort of said, you're, you, what you do is you prime those neural pathways. So the pathway from the brain down to the, the muscles that are required to push away from the blocks are absolutely primed to, to a T, and that's the, the focus that Tony's talking about. But you're searching for that stimulus of the gun, of the auditory sim stimulus, but there are other stimuli around you that are associated with that gun, such, such as, as the next the person standing next to you will about to go going absolutely, first. Absolutely, absolutely. So what, what can happen is that you that stimulus overrides the and that's a um, and I'm so sure Tony uh, can can sort of talk further from his experiences in that. And just to bring Chris in on, on this, can we just to clarify the rules have only just changed only last year, wasn't yes, it? Yes, I mean we used to get two goes at it. I mean Tony, you're you're bad. I mean I'm, <laughs> unfortunately I'm, I'm going to bring it up. Um, <laughs> yeah. You used to get two goes at it, and unfortunately two goes wasn't enough for some. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I mean you were disqualified at some pretty major events in your life. I mean, I don't You're want to remind you. to upset everybody. No, I'm, but it, the thing is, it, it is important to remember. I mean, it happened to you, didn't it, Tony? Yeah, it happened to me at the World Champs at uh, 2001 in Edmonton. And, you know, it was just one of those things where the first one, when, when it started, the first, my first full start was the guy actually's arm twitched and I went out. And the second one, it was just me. Um, I, you know, my brain was telling me to stay in the blocks, wait for the gun. And I just feel myself stepping out. And the first thing you're thinking, what did I just do there? Because you know you want to just wait for that gun. And the thing is, though, that a lot of athletes backed the change, didn't they? Usain Bolt being one of them. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people saying it came from television cameras and television producers saying, look, we can't have loads of full starts. This is driving us bonkers. We haven't got enough time. Mm. But, I mean, the thing that I have a problem with, I mean, you had two goes at it. Mm. That's how it used to happen. And you think, well, if you mess up after two, that's, that's bad enough. But we still have, we're still not clear, even now, whether it was Usain Bolt's fault, whether there was a flex mm. from someone else. And it's very difficult to say, hey, it was your fault. No, it wasn't. It was his fault. Mm. And I, I just wonder, at an Olympic Games, whether that's good enough. I mean, what do you think about it, Tony? I think, I think the rules should change. Uh, the rules before that was better, where somebody would full start. They had one full start, but everybody else would be on a caution. So the next person with full, full start would actually go out. So, so it gives you the opportunity to run. You know, I think what every athlete wants to do is to run. You know, everybody put it this way: if it wasn't you saying Bolt, full, if it wasn't you saying Bolt full starting, we wouldn't be sitting here. You know, sure. If anybody um, else was in the race full starting, yeah. be like, okay, that's it. Was, he wasn't paying, you know, wasn't paying attention. But because you saying Bolt is such a great star, uh, you know, everybody wants to see him run. So I think that rule will definitely change. Simon, the psychologically, you've been training for months, often years, for this one moment. That's a huge pressure to deal with. I mean, what advice do you give someone to say, just calm down? Well, I mean, when, you're, when you reach that kind of level, though, the advice is really just to do what you always do. Hussein Bolt's not in this position for, for no reason. Uh, and I think this is the very first time he's ever full started. 
Um, so, so what will he be doing now then to make sure it doesn't happen again? Well, I mean, I'd be speculating, but I would, I would suggest that, and I think uh, some of the stuff I've read already is um, obviously massive, massive disappointment. Um, but he's got 200 meters starting on Friday, I believe, mm. or Saturday, uh, the heat start. So he needs to, to now refocus. And my advice would just would be to stick to your plan. There's no reason to change anything. You can't recreate that moment, can you, really? No, it's, it's done. Um, he needs to maybe find some closure by looking at it, evaluating what went wrong, and, and putting some thought to it. But I think then it's about refocusing, ready for, for mm. the 200 metres. Sam, can I just ask you, what did you say that you had to do? What training, what channels do you have to clear up? If you're trying to focus on the start, you said you had to, to work on what parts of your brain? I, I said the sort of the neural pathways. Neural pathways. That's <laughs> what was missing when you were alive. It was me, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Tony, uh, uh, gamesmanship, does it, do, does it exist? I mean, are there some of your former colleagues who, who might have tried to make someone false start? I don't think no one wants to actually make somebody full start. There are, I think everybody wants to get out well and to perform well. So somebody might flinch in the blocks to try to get out and then you might step out. Um, just like we saw in, uh, Johan Blake actually flinched because he wanted to start but it didn't register. But then you saw Usain Bolt step mm -hmm. out. So I don't think there was, the only part is game and shit is when you're standing in your blocks, just before you go in the blocks, you know, you're staring at people or you're, what Usain Bolt do, he's playing up to the camera. And that's, that's game and shit because you're, you're taking somebody else out of their comfort zone. But if you All flex, it's illegal, isn't it? It's actually it part be. of a full start. Yeah, it should yeah. be because that's the same um, happened to you, um, Dwayne Chambers. He flinched in the blocks, his back leg moved, then he got disqualified. His arms didn't move, he didn't step out of the blocks, but his back leg did move. OK, all right, That's well, absolutely, there, gentlemen. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank Simon you. Simon Tony Thank and you. Chris, good to have you in. Go and clear those, go and clear those channels out. <laughs> <laughs> those neural pathways. <laughs> uh, uh, it's a quarter to eight now. Are you watching Breakfast from BBC News, the main stories this morning?